wanted to go over a couple of the homework questions that people struggled with. So the one about the electrocardiogram, what I'd like to cover is the differences between lead one and lead two. So if we are talking about the depolarization of the ventricles is going to be larger waves from lead two. The reason being that when the depolarization is going down, the interventricular symptom, lead two is going to be the most parallel. So going down the septum and going down lead two makes it much larger, but if you use lead one, it probably just wouldn't be as large. So the question on the homework was about which one would have a larger QRS, and that answer would lead two. So I'll repeat this, but we'll figure out something for lead one. I think lead one was the example that I had put in the activity book. Lead one is most nicely aligned with the atria. So if lead one is going this way, anything that's gonna go parallel to that, for instance, the sinoatrial node depolarizing across the atria, will be larger in lead one Lead two, also it's gonna show a positive wave, but it just won't be as big. So in conclusion, on an electrocardiogram, you will get bigger waves in locations where they would be more parallel to the alignment of the leads. The other question had to do with when during a cardiac cycle would blood flow through the coronaries be reduced? Flow through the coronary arteries is not continuous throughout the cardiac cycle. At rest, when we have the semilunar valves are gonna be closed, we'll just do the aortic one because that's the only one that matters here, we're gonna have plenty of flow going all out to the heart. However, during systole is when the heart muscle is contracting then what's happening there are two things. Not only is the contracting muscle squeezing the coronary arteries, really kind of crushing them down, particularly the ones going down into the heart muscle itself, reducing flow, but a secondary issue is these semilunar valves are up and over, and they're essentially blocking the flow out to the coronary arteries as well. So during systole, we are going to have reduced flow.